Hello everyone, in this edition of our devotion, I want to talk just a few moments on 2 plus 2 equals 4. 2 plus 2 equals 4. St. Mark's Gospel, chapter number 9, verse number 38. That's Mark's Gospel, chapter 9, verse 38. And John answered him, saying, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and he followeth not us. And we forbade him, because he followeth not us. But Jesus said, Forbid him not, for there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name that can lightly speak evil of me. For he that is not against us is on our part. Now, first and foremost, I want to say that I am not ecumenical, and I do not believe in ecumenicalism. Uh, I believe uh, that we need to serve one God. We must believe this. We cannot compromise on this. We must believe in the virgin birth, the sinless life, the vicarious death, the burial of Christ, and the resurrection from the dead. We cannot compromise on that. That's the fundamentals of the gospel. And so uh, I will not, I will not worship with anyone that doesn't believe this. And so therefore, I cannot worship with those that has their attention on another deity or another God besides the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I refuse to do so. So I cannot worship with uh, those who worship Baal and Ashtaroth and Dagon and those today who worship Muhammad and Allah and Harry Christner and on down the line, I cannot worship with them. I refuse to worship with them. But if you believe in the virgin birth, the sinless life, the vicarious death, and the glorious resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, I can worship with you. Now, in this scripture that I've read in your hearing, John comes to the Lord and he tells the Lord, there's a man who was doing a miracle but he doesn't follow after us. And Jesus looked at him and Jesus said, no man can do a miracle lightly in my name and speak evil against me. For those who are not against us are for us. And so I want to talk just for a few moments about two plus two equals four. And we have so many folks uh, that gets in a, in that state of mind to where they only see that one way of getting two plus two to equal four. But may I submit to you that five minus one also equals four? Not only that, uh, but we can also look and say that three plus one equals four. In fact, we can take a thousand and subtract 996 and we get the number four. So there's more than one way to get the number four. And just because you use different ways to get the number four in your equation doesn't mean uh, that you're wrong in the way that you do it. And just because someone worships a little different than we do doesn't mean that they're wrong. Now, some churches have services Sunday evenings at two or three o'clock in the evening, but I can't find in the scriptures where the Bible teaches us to have Sunday school at 10 o'clock in the morning. So how can we condemn them over that when the Bible doesn't tell us when to have services. Also, there's a lot of folks that will say, uh, well, vacation Bible school lasts all week. So does revivals. And uh, we see a lot of things that people do that they do different than we do. Wednesday night service, we start at seven. Somebody else starts at six. And so just because somebody does something one way different to you doesn't mean that they're wrong in what they're doing. And that's what Jesus was trying to explain to John. He was saying, just because this man doesn't follow us or doesn't do it the way that we do it, doesn't make this individual wrong. Now, once again, I'm not ecumenical and I do not fall into the category of ecumenicalism. I believe that we need to, uh, I cannot and will not worship with anyone that doesn't believe in the virgin birth, the sinless life, the vicarious death, and the glorious resurrection. But I just wanted to come on here and 
say we need unity in the body of Christ. Now, we don't need to compromise. Please understand what I'm saying. We don't need to compromise on what we believe. You see a lot of folks, when they're at Jim's church, they believe like Jim. When they're at Bill's church, they believe like Bill. When they're over at Henry's church, they believe like Henry. That's unstableness, and that's not good. God doesn't want us to be like that, but neither does God want us to go in and cause trouble and cause a division and cause discord and a debate in the sanctuary of God uh, by standing up and telling what we believe and trying to cause a feud and a fuss and all of that. Now, the Lord, he brought us out of the world when he saved us. Uh, Come ye out of the world and be ye a separate people, saith the Lord. So he calls us out of the world. But then, according to Mark in the Great Commission, uh, Jesus said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. He that believeth shall be saved. And so, friend, I want to say, according to that, the Lord has called us out of the world uh, to teach us and to qualify us to go back into the world with the gospel message of the Lord Jesus Christ and try to be a blessing to others. So just because someone worships a little different than you do doesn't mean that they're wrong in the way that they worship. There's many positions of prayer uh, it recorded in the scripture. There's people who prayed standing up. There's people people who prayed laying down on their face. There's people who prayed bowing in that position. So just because somebody prays in a different bodily position than what we're accustomed to doesn't mean they're wrong. In fact, it's not uh, the condition of the body. It's not about that, uh, the position of the body. It's about the condition of the heart. And so we fall out over so many things, and there's so many uh, that will fall out over once in grace, always in grace, and uh, eternal security, and also uh, losing your salvation or falling from grace. Then you have those that says, well, the tongues are for today. Then you got others who says tongues are not for today. And then uh, you got folks that says women can preach. And you got others that says uh, that women cannot preach. And we got so many, so many of these different doctrines, and we're fighting against each other and fussing and feuding each other. And while we're doing this, Souls are slipping out of the hand of the church and they're dying lost. And I hate to say it, but they're going to hell. And a lot of it is the church's responsibility. And the church is the reason why we are to blame. God help us to realize two plus two does equal four. But so does three plus one. So does five minus one. And so does a hundred. And subtracting 96 from a hundred, it also equals four. So there's more than one way to get that answer and that equation just right. And friend, I'm again, we don't need to compromise on what we believe, but we don't need to allow what we believe to cause a debate and discord in the body of Christ. We need to come together in unity, in harmony, in the spirit of love, and we need to do our best to be a vessel that God can use for his glory and for his honor. The major doctrines of the scripture is the virgin birth, the sinless life, the vicarious death, and the glorious resurrection. Other things that's in the scripture that's doctrinal, they're minor in comparison to these doctrines. And so we must believe these things. Now, I'm not telling anybody to compromise on what you believe. Do not compromise on what you believe. But don't allow what you believe to cause a feud and a debate with your brothers and sisters in the faith. If we disagree on something, let's walk away from that and find something we agree on. Let's find some common ground. So I hope this little devotion has made sense. Once again, to 
plus two equals four, but so does five minus one. So does three plus one. So does a thousand plus nine mi minus a thousand minus nine hundred and ninety six equals four. Jesus is the way to heaven and the only way that we can make it. So we cannot compromise, but we also need to have unity in the body of Christ. God bless you. I love every one of you on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. I hope this has made some sort of sense.